it race is, absolutely but, plays a role in a lot of black comedy there's a lot of racist jokes against white people and we all laugh about it, it it's just in society we've deemed it okay to shit on white people um and and less okay to shit on people of color and why that is is i i don't i don't fully know there's a whole whole slew of punching up versus punching down and a lot of history and of of who was racist against who and how that impacted and all this other stuff for our next topic ladies and gentlemen Does using edgy humor encourage people to adapt hateful behavior? I'm going to let my boy Doughboy uh, wheel us in this conversation here. So he's the edgiest and most hateful person in the group. Absolutely. Dun, dun, dun. Um, I hate Tony. That's it. That's it. (laughs) It's not even related to the edgy humor thing. (laughs) (laughs) So recently, No Jumper fell apart that their whole entire crew is no longer there um everybody has jumped ship either to a different uh brand or a different podcast created their own stuff um and a lot of it came from him platforming uh the nazi guy richard spencer a lot of people were pissed off at him in his crew for doing that they're like damn like why are you even giving this guy a platform to even speak or utter a word and then you had a very famous streamer very famous uh youtuber destiny went on there and made a joke and said um he's like oh he's uh something he's a business owner and but he's like wait i thought you were like a slave owner of hip-hop because they're so he is like the only white guy there other than the camera guy everyone else is black so he kind of made a joke saying you know what i mean you're like the slave owner of hip-hop right now and um everybody laughed and a lot of people got offended that he didn't like tell them like nah that's not cool or he didn't like stop him from saying something like that so everybody is like saying like yo this shit is kind of foul how how if everybody's questioning the people that stayed there and said like, Oh, how can you stay with somebody like that? That'll laugh at a joke like that. Um, and I actually was a little bit disappointed because I thought that joke was a little bit very spicy, very edgy. You know what I mean? Uh, as a part of humor, I, I didn't think it was funny. Uh, I actually thought it was kind of racist and, uh, that's where the topic comes from. Um, is it, is it racist to make jokes in that manner? I think it's, and- I think it's tricky. I think it's tricky. Um, so my, my kind of experience with this is besides some of the obvious ones, right? Like South Park probably does satire and things like that better than anyone else. I think some of their old, their old episodes have not aged well. <laughs> Some, yeah. of the, some of the humor does not quite stand up. I think a lot of it does because I think that the way that, that South Park approaches things like that is pretty good. But there's even channels like uh, like Achievement Hunter, man, like their, their whole drama that they've had in the last couple of years where some of their edgier jokes came up. And I think that there's tricky ways to do that. I mean, if your joke is just saying a racial slur for shock value. That's that's probably not the move, man. I don't think that joke's going to hold up. I don't think that joke was even right at the time. We were just on the edgier side of of the of the the internet at that point. But like Funhouse has some bits they do where they, you know, fake misogyny and things like that. And they do it through an ironic lens. Obviously, these guys aren't actually they don't actually feel that way. They're trying to put, you know, they're trying to hold up the mirror to how ridiculous you look when you when you say things like this, when you have uh, ideals like this. But how do you. uh how do you figure out that line and how do you know how your audience is going to take it? Is your audience going to take that as, Oh, this means I can make mis- misogynistic jokes. I can, I can make racial jokes. And at what point does that become actual hate? <laughs> yeah. I think um, if you make a joke a lot, there's going to be people that, um, that are going to come along eventually hear the jokes and not really hear them as jokes and it's going to speak to something in them 
and they're going to stick around for the racism or the sexism. And, and so I, I definitely feel like making edgy, having, doing edgy humor like that needs to come with a heavy dose of making it very clear of what your stances are. I think if, if, you know, you might have said, oh, I love all women and I'm not misogynistic sometime in the past. And then you proceed to just make a bunch of misogynistic jokes. Like you're going to have some number of misogynists that are your fans because of the misogynistic joke. Um, and, you know, that I guess that's on you to contend with. But I, I do think that. Like, for example, back in the day, right, people used to use like gay as something lame. Yeah, like a right? pejorative. Right, like a pejorative. And I feel like. As and I, growing up, I would say that bullshit too, right? But as I grown up, I realized how stupid it was and all this stuff. And removing that from my vocabulary, I feel like the people who still say that still have some homophobic tendencies, R- regardless of if they just say, "Oh no, it's just a word," blah blah blah. I'm like, I see the way that you react to certain things. I see the way you move. I feel like you still harbor some feelings, and not that eliminating that word would solve all those other problems i feel like they kind of go in tandem with one another the fact that you still use this word as a pejorative probably means that you still have some uh hateful feelings in your heart and vice versa the fact that you have hateful feelings is probably why you use it as a pejorative um i don't know seeing that relationship just makes me believe that yeah you could drag people in with edge humor and people will stick around it's like the donald actually you guys remember the donald on on reddit there was a subreddit just making fun of the idea that donald trump was running for president and then it became like his his platform it became like then it became his platform his biggest place of support was the donald and it got to the point where they had to shut this place down because of how ridiculous, like, I think they were doing death threats and things like that by the end of it. But it started off as like a, ha, 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 let's just make fun of the idea that Donald Trump's running for president. And let's just all make believe like we're all Trump supporters. Like, we're in this j- joke. We're all in this big, edgy joke. And it was like, I would go there and laugh about, like, the ridiculous of things. And little by little, real Trump supporters started taking over that place. So, like that edge of humor dragged all those people there. And I feel like that absolutely happens. Like in a lot of the cases, just the example that came to my mind. But. That's a good one though. I mean, that that's, that's a very recent real thing that we saw happen. What's the uh, cutoff though? Like how many times can you say a joke before you're viewed or painted or tainted as joke you're making, whether it's racist or you know what I mean? Like that's, what's the, that's what, my like, issue. Of, with destiny is that he's been on record saying some jokes that that are not like that are super edgy and he's also defended himself he had a he had a a, what was the show he had with the guy the black dude that stopped because the black dude found out he was made some jokes or some shit like that in private try a podcast i forget i don't remember he's a speed runner he's a speed run super mario world 2 the yoshi's island game yeah really yeah Yeah, there's a random yeah so i don't think destiny is a bad person but he's has been known to make like really edgy and racist jokes there was a group there was a group i don't don't uh, think i don't think you have to be a bad person to be surrounded by bad people necessarily or have a fan base that's toxic or things like that i mean like We've seen that like I uh, I mean, that that's it's almost like the PewDiePie thing, too. Right. There's so many examples. This is one of the, one of the problems with this topic, because there's so many examples of people doing this uh, PewDiePie's things where he was paying people to put up like anti-Semitic signs and things like that, ironically. And it's like, what, what is the what is the actual joke here, though? The, the, if you're saying that, like the Holocaust didn't happen, that's the joke. That's I don't, I don't understand the joke. It, it, it never made any sense to me. So. Like going back to the the cutoff point, like yeah, I, one, I don't know how many times Tony. I, because I don't think I've no, I've like if I myself made jokes, whether whether or not it's edgy or or some people find it edgy or some people find it hilarious, it doesn't it doesn't necessarily make you a racist or make you uh, homophobic or that. But I do I I am in agreement though. 
you say it like a thousand times, all right, or like, or you know what I mean? There's, there is a, there is a time. I just don't know what it, like the amount. I just don't know what it is, but it's just like, hmm, okay, not as questionable. Even though you've known me for a high X amount of time or whatever, if I keep saying the same jokes, you're going to be like, damn, like how many times are we going to keep saying the same type of painted joke that you keep doing? I mean, before you realize your your cutoff time is going to be different from like a person you actually interact with daily or a, a friend than like a, a performer, right? Because with a performer, you understand even if you're on YouTube or something, there's some amount of your personality that that's being changed, that's being modified, that's being turned up a little bit, right? And also, does race play a big part of this? Like it's a white guy making black jokes versus a black guy making white jokes or, you know, Spanish making black and white jokes like does does a different race play a part of the cutoff well, point? As well, people well? from Spain should probably not be making any, any racial jokes <laughs> in general because they're just, you know, colonizers over there. But, but you know yes, what I mean? It's, race absolutely it, plays a role in a lot of black comedy. There's a lot of racist jokes against white people and we all laugh about it. Um, if white people did the equivalent they would be ostracized from comedy. Like Which there is are unfair. some people, there are some people that may be able to pull, pull it off. Like who's the something George Carlin or something. He, he's, is that a guy? Yeah. George right? Carlin. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. Right. He has a lot. He's had a lot edgy of edgy humor. jokes and yes. stuff like that. And people accept it. It's George Carlin, whatever. But like, I feel like there's a lot of other cases where people would be like, like, nah, it's just in society. We've deemed it okay to shit on white people um f- and and less okay to shit on people of color and why that is is i i don't i don't fully know there's a whole whole slew of punching up versus punching down and a lot of history and of of who was racist against who and how that impacted and all this other stuff i personally feel like it's not okay to 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 be racist against one race and it be acceptable and then against other races. And it's like the most taboo thing in the world. It should probably just like, we should probably just stop being racist. Like like, as a society treat all racism as bad, but um, yeah, absolutely. Race plays a factor to to answer your question. Societally. Yes. Somebody, a black guy making jokes about white people would be far more accepted than the opposite. Um, So, for the like the no jumper thing, right? Adam was the one that's obviously was put on fire for what the heck he did. Do you think that the overreaction of his fellow coworkers or whatever? Yeah, I think there's an overreaction, and I think that that's also an issue to overreact. I think uh, I think there is an overreaction. Um, it's just uh, I don't I don't know how to describe it. Uh, what it I is? I feel like if- the thing that happened in No Jumper was all this baggage over all this time, and people were gonna leave the podcast anyways, and all this other stuff. And because this happened, that's the thing they're focusing on. Yeah, not any of the other stuff. And like ultimately, Adam said something about how one of his hosts was boring and made the same jokes. He said that to somebody else in the office. The word got around and people acted like that was the worst thing they could ever do. And that's why they were leaving. Then they went back and go, oh, look at this other time that Adam like laughed at this racist joke, which like, sure, if it if it's just racist for the sake of being racist, like, yeah, he probably should have called out who, the guest and all of that stuff. But it also just like, all right, it feels a little convenient. Like you're just reaching for something to add like post hoc justify your feelings like like i have a bad feeling about somebody now and i'm gonna look back to the past to see other things to say oh yeah my current feelings are totally valid like like it's like yeah you probably just feel the way you feel and you should just accept it you don't need to justify it but based off some random stuff you're gonna dig out like i don't know that's what i feel happening on jumper bro my favorite thing with the whole destiny uh, jokes and the jokes he's made, there was one time he was on a stream with a bunch of black people and they were like, they put him on trial. <laughs> They're like, Oh, I've heard stuff about you. And then when they finally caught him and they're like, we got him boys. And everybody was like, yeah, they, put it, they got him. 
It's hilarious. It was one of the, the applause sound and everything. Yeah, it was. It was a really funny. Um, uh, and the way that those guys handled it was so cool. I was like, man, this is so awesome that even in this situation, that everybody's being really like cool about the situation. They're not letting shit go, but they're able to laugh about it and joke about it. Um, and I thought that that was very interesting. Uh, and Destiny was being a good, good, pretty much a good sport. He was defending himself, but um, I, I watch Destiny. I watch him a lot, and I thought that this whole arc that he, him going to No Jumper, him being around, him having beef with House Phone, another person on No Jumper, and I, I just thought this arc of his was very interesting. Um, and do you think, like, do even, you think some aspect of this is scripted? Like, is there? I can't <laughs> see it being that. It, I'd be it's, feeling like that sometimes. This feels like WWF stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like that's what I, I get. Mean, but uh, granted, I only hear about it from Doey and uh, occasionally the rest of y'all. But yeah. like, it some of the shit just it just sounds so scripted, dude. It sounds like a soap opera or like WWE stuff or. They, they, me, they even do like a, like wrestling promo style with like shit talking to each other sometimes. <laughs> it, fe- it feels more like high school. If you ask me, if a lot of these grown men are so immature, it's such like an immature, really uh, super like neighborhood kind of feeling. Um, you know, just getting it just I don't know. It feels very backwards. They have um, they have code words for homosexual stuff and i don't like that shit because there's they call it gps they'll say words like gps they'll say words like and this is calling you a homosexual or stuff like that uh which i think is super messed up so a lot of these guys are still stuck in their old ways that like you know what i mean um one of the interesting too is like we view these guys like they're stuck in their old ways and they're old guys most of those people are our age or younger. Mm-hmm. Yep. It's like, <clears throat> like they shouldn't be stuck in their ways. Like if I could change growing up in the era of the internet where everybody was a racist, you couldn't get into any voice lobby without being called the N word or anything like that. <laughs> and like to, to, to day where that's not prevalent at all anymore. It's like, I feel like they could change as well. Like if the whole world could change, I think they could change. Yeah, and I think it's like it's setting a really low bar to be like, nah, you know, they they just can't change. Like I don't know, like the whole house phone situation. House phone had sex or some type of sexual relationship with a trans woman, mm-hmm. and but it was like on the low, and then she went on no jumper on the podcast, and she outed him on the podcast that oh. We, I, you know, me and this guy have had some relations. So now automatically he's a homosexual because those people don't view trans people as their preferred gender or whatever. They view them as their assigned at birth gender. So auto, now he's a homosexual because to them, he, they, he had sex with a man. And then the funniest part about the whole thing is that these guys like to throw rocks in a glass house. That guy wanted a, that guy started attacking destiny because destiny is bisexual so he started attacking destiny for being bi so the destiny attacked him for having sex with he's like dude you're the person who's having a meltdown over having sex with a trans person like and then uh, then uh, now he's i'm gonna kill you when i see you because how dare you disrespect me like that and it's like it's like uh, i just feel like we're so immature like like what is and it speaks to something that i'm entertained by this right like i'm i'm immature too right but well, yeah, I mean, I people know. people like soap operas. People like, people <laughs> like soap operas. They just repackage them in all kinds of different forms for us. The Walking Dead is a soap opera. Walking Dead is 100% do, a soap opera that just happens to have zombies. Everyone I, yo, loves drama. Everyone loves soap operas. And yo, him firing that guy live on live. I was yeah, like, I was yo, just this trying is trying to get there. I think so that was beast. my only problem I had with the whole sequence of Fallout. Of the Fallout was. You're firing a man live on air, like that's kind of like that's not how you handle business. First off, yeah. Second of all, it's like, what are you trying to be? You trying to be a a a hold of him? Like he sounded like he was trying to. He sounded like he was trying to be a Don Lush. You lied to me, Lush. You lied to me. 
I think he was trying to get him to admit it. Because everything I know Jumper, I swear, is WWF. So everything is content. We could fire him behind the scenes, but then we wouldn't be able to make content out of it. So yep. he's like, let me fire him on camera. It's going to be controversial. It's going to get clipped. It's going to go viral. And, like, that's the... That seems to be the logic over there. And, like, you know, I don't blame them. It's not the way that maybe you should conduct yourself if you want to maintain long-term business relationships and healthy relationships. But it's probably certainly the way you should act if you want viral clips and, and stuff like that. But, um, um, To go back to the edgy humor, if you go to a comedy show... Like you, I don't. I personally don't think you should catch a hurdy by any of the jokes that are being said. I um, I don't. I don't know if I agree with that. What about uh, what's his name, Kramer's meltdown, where he got heckled and then he decided that the oh, best Philly, the best joke he could say at the time was just to call the guy the n word a bunch. Yeah. In I his mind, in his mind, he was making a joke. He still defends that to his day that he was making a joke. He was trying to out edgy the guy that was that was heckling him in the crowd or whatever. I don't know. Wait, I don't think that's the Philly guy I'm talking about. I'm, ta- I'm, talking, about Kramer. I'm talking about Kramer, talking from, about Seinfeld. Kramer from Seinfeld. Mm-hmm. Oh, I didn't even know about that. It doesn't matter. You don't got to know. So, but but no, they yeah. was just telling you an example of some comedian tried to out edge some heckler and he did it in a really racist way. And yeah. we shouldn't defend that racist behavior. That's different from a comedy show. He it was, got heckled. It was, it was, it was, it was, it was at a comedy Listen, show. It was at a comedy show, but that's not. I guarantee I, you, that was not his skit. That was okay, not his. Okay, that which was is not, what I wanted on, to let say. Let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. Yeah. That was not his skit. That was not his um his idea of going into the show. I, I mean, but absolutely. Like, like he didn't have a notebook that he came out with, and he was like, "Well, cool. we're 15 minutes in. Time for me to yell at someone and so, call them the no, N word yeah. a bunch of so, times." There's a word point. for what happened. It's called bombing. He why started to different? bomb. Why is that it's different? It's different. Because I'm asking, he, why is it different for someone to plan to make a racist joke versus to spontaneously make a racist joke? Because you're What's doing it out of hate. Doing it out of anger. You're doing it out well, of emotion. Well, why does that matter? It has a lot to matter with comedy. Because, like, if I'm there, you're going there for a joke. If I'm a comedian, comedian and I'm saying a joke, I have a plan. It's supposed to go with the flow of, the, of my storytelling versus me getting hot and now I'm just going off of strict emotions. And when you go off strict emotions, you kind of reveal your true feelings on certain shit. So I think that's what that's the difference for me. If you're saying I'm wrong, that's a whole different conversation. No, I'm not then, saying you're wrong. I'm I'm just trying to understand. So you're saying you shouldn't catch a hurdy. You shouldn't have negative feelings towards someone making jokes at you at a comedy show unless it's evident that they're doing it from an emotional place and then you can get upset by it. That was like your point. No. No, I think if you like people are gonna catch hurdies. Well, you said you po- shouldn't catch a hurdy at a comedy if show. You're, yeah, if you're going to a comedy show, there's a story gonna be told. I don't think you should catch a hurdy. And then for Mattel that. responded, but, someone, but what about Kramer when he made racist jokes? Someone heckled saying, him. Yeah. Someone heckled him, and I guess his emotion was to be racist. So yeah, th- at that point, yeah, you should feel a hurt because that's not that that's not part of the show. I, that's that that shit just, just want to understand your stand. Yeah, I just yeah, yeah. I I think that it is doable to make racial jokes at a com- at a comedy show. I think that it I think it's possible to do racial humor. I think it's Same. I think that the people that can do it are rare. I think that it's I think partially because it's so played out. I mean that was everything in the '90s. Every comedy show was just racial jokes in the '90s and the '80s. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. So it's kind of played out. I think if if you want to make it work, it's tricky now. And me personally, I I, I just don't go near that. <laughs> yeah. No, I'll yeah, be I honest. I don't want no comedian looking at me to make a joke during a comedy show. <laughs> I, so I thought about I Will Smith. Front. I will Will Smith a comedian. Don't sit I, th- in the I front. thought about that. What, you know, watching the Nutty Professor and they go to like the insult comedy show. Who wants to go to those shows? I don't. I don't want to be targeted. I, in the- actually, my wife and her sister want to go to one of these insult shows. They're like, it's so funny, Annie. They're like, we have to sit in the front so they can insult us. And I'm like, you want me to catch an assault charge? Like. <laughs> like <laughs> It's like those people that go to that. Uh, it's like those people that go to that restaurant where they're just they're assholes to you. What is that restaurant called? Dicks or something like that? Oh, where they yeah, just I've insult you and roast you the entire time. It does not sound appealing to me at all. I roast myself enough in my own head. I don't. I don't need yeah. someone outside roasting me. I did yes. have a question, Dewey, because I don't think you ever responded. Because um, the other day I asked that when this came up, you were like super strong. You had a strong stance against. 
racist jokes. You were like, I think if you make a racist joke, that makes you a racist. Mm -hmm. Then you linked the other comedian that you've been liking lately, and he made some racist jokes. And I was asking you, like, did you find those jokes funny? or or What racist jokes? It was... He was making a joke, basically, that black teens... Yeah. He was stereotyping black teens as the people that would go crazy recording you, making fun of you if you were to fall down in public. But because yeah. he was so fat, they didn't feel comfortable doing it and they were concerned for him. They were acting yeah. out of character for him. And that is a racist joke. I think that's tasteful. I think that's a that's funny rather than I mean, it I being... think I think it's funny. But yeah, I thought I thought just it was the a... other you were just saying if you make a racist joke, you are a racist. I don't think that's a racist joke. I don't, I don't think even think that sounds think, like a I don't what? think I, I think I, it was funny. I, I thought I, I thought I, it was more funny. I actually might be aligned with, with Doe. I'd have to hear the joke to get a uh, like a full opinion because I'm going just off the description of the joke. But to yeah. me it sounds like a racial joke but not a racist joke. <laughs> yeah. So I, he's he was it's saying not hateful, that. but it's stereotyping black kids to be like world star recording anytime anything happens. It's clearly a stereotype. If Fair, you yeah. most live, black people don't whip live, out their phones to record you when, when if you live happens. in New York and you understand the way teens behave in New York, uh, you would understand the joke like a little bit more. I completely yeah, he, understand. The joke. He associated yeah, no, it with color though. That's, everybody that's what, uh, what records everything. Like no, it, he's saying teen- these black teens. He's he's calling out a particular race of yeah. people for saying that because they are the race that does this. Thing, any right? any time anything happens, they will record it. Well, I know, but you just said any teen now. Down. You're black teen. No, I'm just saying young. Yeah, the what he's but talking he's, about. Like I said, he, you have to. It's kind of based in New York, it's, so it, it makes more sense. It has nothing you, to do with New York. He it just, absolutely he just, has to do everything with New York. He says in the New York subway. I'm saying he associated with color. It's the, it's yeah, just you see, the, I, you guys, I, you guys aren't getting that part of the joke. Personally. I completely understand the joke. Yeah, but just saying, he could just as easily be anywhere else where there's a lot of young black teens, and the joke yeah. works. He exactly. happened to fall in the New York subway, but that's that wasn't some crazy important factor to the joke. Are you saying that black teens in New York record people, but people elsewhere don't? I think you right? have to know what he's talking about. Yes. I know exactly what he's. Th- I don't know why. You yeah, I think that. you have to know the audience, and I think he understands his audience, and I think that's why the joke hits personally. I, I thought it was a funny joke. I just yeah. also think it was a racist joke. Like I think it was yeah. a joke that only works by him calling yeah. out a there's, stereotype of black teens. Like, yeah, there's a huge yeah. difference between that and like uh, more edgy humor. That's like very tame, if you ask me. Like super. Yeah, tame. no, I don't. I don't disagree at all. Yeah, I think there's I levels. I think it's racist, and, and you're saying that now there's a spectrum of racism that you could use in a joke. I and think if you go too racist, and then you think it's racist. But if yeah, I think right, there's a fine okay. line. I think that's the whole that's point fine. of that's comedy, just, though. That was not your stance. Comedy. Before, so that's why I was it's always been my stance. You said if you make a racist joke, you're a racist. Yeah, no, no, and no. Now you're uh, saying well, you can make a racist joke. We as long can as it's have tasteful. the conversation. The we can have the conversation, but we hadn't had that conversation. We're having it right I think now. There's a fine. Yeah, you're not letting me speak though. Uh, um, if there's a fine line between something being clearly racist and not funny, and and like comedy, there's a barometer. It's not black and white. You can't just say just because I insert a a skin color. That now the joke is racist. I don't think you can say that, especially in comedy. I think comedy has a lot of nuances. I think comedy has delivery tactics. And I think there's bits. I think there's there's jokes that come before it that kind of set it up. And I think you have to take all these things into account, especially when you're watching comedy. Uh, but I think you can take liberties in comedy and you can kind of use the um, you can kind of use those tactics. I think it's completely fine personally yeah, uh, but i, I think don't... once you once you cross the line because look at paul mooney i think paul mooney shit is fucking classic but he was tearing into people and a lot of people felt uncomfortable by it uh, but if you can get what he's doing in those comedy shows it makes it a lot more funny um, but I think you just have to understand comedy. I've loved comedy. I'm super into comedy, so I can I I can feel when the joke doesn't hit, and I'm like, ugh. But jokes hit differently for everybody. Hates white people. Uh, I think there is some level of hate. Yeah, in racist. Paul Mooney's heart. I don't I don't know if he's racist, 
Uh, but I, I would don't say know it I think that it. that if you, uh, I I would say um, he is a mirror. So he is what he grew up and what was shown to him. So he's like a mirror. So he's showing you. He's not. He's just. Uh, he's. Uh, it's just a mirror effect. And and I think it's a, It's poetic that it's the the jokes he made. I think yo analyzing white America. What a beautiful like that shit should be in some museum because it's just it's I think everybody should go watch it. Yeah. So if a joke doesn't hit for you, I mean, jokes hit everybody differently, right? For sure. So if he makes a racist joke and I don't find it racist or not, mm, let me not say that an edgy racist joke and I don't find it in a way where it's hurtful, but you do. How can how can you. I guess what I'm trying to say, how can you tell, how can you make a, a claim saying, oh, he is racist? Like, eh, maybe because the, like, Paul Mooney, I, that, that, that's his name, right? At least yeah. for me, when the body of your jokes, like, remember how earlier we were saying, when you keep making the same joke the a same lot jokes, yeah. and the, against the same people for similar things, it feels like you have a tendency that these are your actual feelings. It's not just a throwaway joke. I feel like Paul Mooney rags on white people to an insane degree. Um, I feel like he has hateful feelings towards white people. Do you think it's just the lack of his skills? Like maybe he doesn't know how to tell no, a joke any just, other. Uh, just, he grew he's up a master comedian. He's hilarious. No. He grew oh, up in okay. segregated times. Yeah, exactly. He, he so probably he grew had up some in number of experiences that made him a racist. Yeah. So he got the do- they chased dogs. They sick dogs after him. He was he was in that era. Um, so that maybe this is his get back. At it. This is just like revenge. I said. It's just a mirror of what he's experienced in America. So this I mean, is what plenty America of black has comedians. turned him into. Yeah, but I mean, there's pl- plenty of black comedians that's you know gone through the same, same or not as same, like you know, same similar stories and stuff, and they don't really, uh, I guess, base their jokes only around that. I yeah, mean, no, he was he he was he says the N word with the E R at the end throughout his whole, and it's rough. A lot of people stand up and leave. Uh, because they, they're so uncomfortable. He uses the 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 ER throughout his whole special. Uh, but I think it's um, like I said, it's just like owning what he had to grow grow through. I think it's so clever. Um, he stops doing it eventually. Also, these guys have bits and they have comedy. You know, their comedy is structured in a way, so you're gonna hear the same jokes a lot throughout their comedy history whenever they get recorded they add new bits to their pieces or maybe completely re- redo their whole bit but you're gonna hear some of the same like jokes yeah I, I don't know there is a there is a certain level for sure certain cutoff point that that it's not written but it's there I, I think that I think you get a, you get a obsessed with these counts Tony like you want you want real measurable numbers you want I made 20 racist jokes so now i'm a racist but if i had stopped 19 <laughs> that's that was no, the, that was I, the magic that was the magic your exit question. To you're get like off. what's the cutoff what's the yeah cutoff? i asked that because it's like most, most of the times you can just feel the cutoff you don't even need to count like if i keep saying and 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 and, and like keep just saying it at some point you're like yo you're beasting at some point in your brain you already hit the point where i'm uncomfortable so it's like for everybody, it's a different point of cutoff, but it's just like, like in a joke, you know. Unfortunately, I'm gonna always say what's the cutoff to almost everything because mine's different from everybody else's. Everybody, I you know, feel it's, like it's almost a useless question. It's, There's a spectrum for everyone, for like, sure. For for Doey, right? The racist joke that occurred on No Jumper crossed the line. I thought it was funny. I thought the joke was like, oh, that it, it was the line very from? edgy, huh? That crossed the line. That crossed the line for you. Yeah, I thought, he made, I the thought guy it made was a slavery a, joke. I thought it was. He, he funny. thought Adam Twenty Two was a black guy, and when he found out Adam Twenty Two was a white guy, he said, "Oh, so you're just a slave owner, not a, like <laughs> something like that, right?" Um, That's and crazy. a lot of people got offended by it and stuff. And it's think, a very edgy joke, yeah. not a joke that I would make, right? But wow. I could see the comedy in it. I wouldn't. I'm not gonna take offense to that. The joke that the other guy with the the subway and falling. 
nowhere near as edgy way way to the way low on the racism like yeah. uh spectrum you know what i'm saying <laughs> my hang up there was just doey earlier when i spoke to him in private claimed anything any racist joke you're racist and then no. now he kind of brought up a spectrum which i totally agree with i do think there's a spectrum i also think the amount of times you make a joke that's far in the racism spectrum i'm like mm, you might be a racist like like so there are counts in my head i don't know what the counts are it's like a feel based thing but it's it's know. definitely a feel base for sure um but yeah th i think that, that i don't that yeah for sure i'm agreeing so if you want to joke about the slave owners the uh, thing but I don't think uh, when you paint, it's different because you that guy painted a picture, right? He was saying when as soon as he associated the color part to it, that's when it's an indication like, okay, he has true feelings about this. Like in his head, he does. Instead of just saying these kids like the all oh, the black the black teens only record. Nah, when it's not true feelings. It's that world star hip hop exists, and we know yeah. the primary people on world star hip hop are black. The primary people that are recording these things are black. So in his mind, he fell in front of a bunch of teens that under the stereotypical mindset should have whipped out their phone, started recording them. Look at this fat bastard that just fell down the subway. Ah, laughing, screaming world star, like all of that's, that's what the he expectation. wanted. <laughs> and when that didn't happen, he realized oh, I'm very fat. They're actually really concerned for my health. So this isn't even funny. It's now in the concern territory. There's nothing to laugh about here. They're treating me like an invalid or something. And that's when he felt like, all right, I got to lose weight, you know? Like, I didn't even get laughed at by black teens, you know? That, and, like, that's a, that's a racist joke. I don't know how you can't say it's racist, but, like... On the spectrum, I think it's pretty low, but I don't know. Yeah, Stavos, he's such he's so funny, bro. I like that guy a lot, bro. It, there's a there's a thing about living in New York, and and it's just I, I love it. The the it gives you such a good view on so many different races and aspects. It's cool. But man, um, well, ladies and gentlemen, if you stuck with us this long through the show with all the technical difficulties, hit that subscribe button. Share, like, follow. We're on Discord. We chat there day to day, every day. Make a comment. Tell us what you thought about it. We read them. Trust me. We read the comments, guys and girls. We read the comments. So feel free to drop and say what you want or even give us a topic idea. You know, we'll gladly give our views or points on it. You know what I mean? But like always, go one up yourself. Peace. Peace.